Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody. Welcome. It's so great to have all of you tune us in and turn us on. We are thrilled. We've got a special series we're doing with all of you, uh, bringing you to the forefront to clearly understand for the most part. And I say for the most part. Because I think we are all work in progresses, work in progresses, work in progress. I don't know. Is it plural, Benny? Is it singular? What is it? You're not asking the right guy on that one. Yeah, huh? boy. <laughs> I know something. <laughs> Progressing? <laughs> progresses. <laughs> See? Yeah, I think y- you and me, we go like uses, uses, use. You Like, I thought that was a word till I was 21. Yeah. <laughs> like, U-Z-E, use. Yeah. Um, but we have a great show today because, I mean, believe it or not, words do matter. Um, I had a moment last night and I was listening to um, uh, a speech uh, last night and I was listening to the words of the speech because, you know, the business that I'm in, um, my words have always been difficult. I stuttered when I was a kid. Um, In order to say I love you, it was extremely difficult. I don't know if I ever got the love word out. Um, Just so many different things that I think about that sometimes I think we could take for granted. But when I think about that, what comes up for me, and this is what captive, this is what caught my heart last night in listening to this speech was as this woman was accepting a role in her life, she began by talking about family and she talked about her mom. And then you you could just hear the, the dialogue, her stepchildren. This was the most beautiful expression of love that I have seen, except for reality TV. But wait a minute, that's not love, is it? Reality TV, Benny? I'm not sure. Um, But it's not one of those things. Like when I watched this and I listened to this last night, you know, I was struck by what it must be like having come from a split family, myself, bringing my mom's kids in, my dad's kids in, what the struggles were. So today, Sabina Rademacher is joining me here today because Sabina and I have been talking about this for a number of times and getting ready for this series because you're going to hear a lot from Sabina. But this is someone who has dedicated her life to helping people understand love and relationships. She is a love and relationship coach. She is passionate about it. She focuses on all aspects of love. That's why we're talking about full circle today. Uh, She understands the ups, the downs, the sideways, uh, the breakups, the makeups, all of that. And today you're going to hear about her journey because when somebody steps forward in the way that she has stepped forward and looks at something as so elusive sometimes at love, you have to really wonder how passionate, purposeful, and how absolutely amazing the lessons may have been for her. So today, how to stop struggling with love but how to understand what full circle love is all about and how do you look at the steps and then stop struggling? Boy, if there's one thing we know of COVID-19, 
it has put us, uh, people of all relationship levels, married, single, living together, not living together, live, put everybody together, and is really calling for people to understand what full circle love is about. Sabine, it's great to have you here. Oh, thank you so much, Dr. Pat. I'm absolutely delighted and very honored to be here with you. What a beautiful invitation. Thank you. <laughs> and a beautiful um, introduction. And, you know, it's so timely. I was listening to the, the speech last night, the acceptance speech of Kamala Harris. And, um, you know, I watch, I watch things like this. It doesn't matter what party it is, right? I watch things like this. And I watch this all over the world. You know, one of the most stunning um, speeches I ever heard was Angela Merkel in Germany in a language that I couldn't understand because you could feel it. But this is about relationships and this is about what happens to us when the juice runs out. <laughs> well, we think the juice runs out. So tell us about this, this meaning of, of, of looking at the struggle with love. And I don't know, is that something you're familiar with? I, I could tell you I am, but you teach it. So you must be very familiar with it. <laughs> oh my God, yes. But before I really go into that about my own struggles, and I just want to say very briefly what you said in your introduction so kindly. Of course, my life has shown me everything what love is not. Until one day, I, it literally hit me that love is a state of being and it's not a demand, it's a gift. And when I integrated that, then suddenly everything came into the forefront and understanding. But yeah, the full circle of love approach is, is it's actually to live and to use consciously your inner powers of love. And they're all based on presence for self-love, for sacred relationships or conscious relating because relationship it's not only romantic it's all kinds of relationships and then of course intimacy plus like you said split ups you know how can we also consciously split up so you asked me why we struggle so much and well for me there's two reasons first of all there is the emptiness inside the personal mm -hmm. emptiness inside that's the main reason I come back to this in a moment and the second reason is of course the constant sabotaging yeah, and one thing goes into the other. So the being empty inside comes from indoctrin indoctrination from our education and, and other things which I would like to speak about if, you, if you're interested to hear. Yeah. But the indoctrination is most of the one we start all off. So I believe that we come to this beautiful earth as being babies of love. You know, we are love. We don't know anything else. Everything comes to us later. And it comes to us through our caretakers. Because as you know, as soon as mom or dad says to you, don't do this, bad girl, you know, yeah. you know the love is threatening. So you're worried about that you're losing that love. So we, from very early stages, we learn how to behave of course, to get love. And that's all depending on the culture we have been dropped in, of course, because it's all, we learn how love looks like in a different culture, in a different background, and different, different behaviors, different communication, different understandings. So we learn that. And then maybe later on, we hit another country and say, hmm, that's different here. But it's a different subject. We can talk about another moment. But definitely just the understanding of, gosh, I'm, I have to contain some of me is not accepted. Already makes something in our inner self believe we are not worthy enough. And that non-worthiness plays out unconsciously, yeah. non-stop in how we walk around. Yeah. That's when I'm saying being empty. Most of the time I play, say to my clients, you know, we walk around like with empty shopping charts and see what we you know what we get so we manipulate a lot and that's another one how we use you know the manipulation we put a lot of demands and expectations out to other people we kind of say okay you you're the one 
who makes me happy. You are the responsibility. And I love Byron Katie's uh, words about this. You know, it's not your job to like me, it's mine. So I have to take full responsibility. I like that word so much in English. Ability to respond. So I have my responsibility, how I feel myself of not being empty. And there's a long story behind how we not doing this in this timing, because you mentioned about COVID as well. When COVID started, I felt like happy. I felt like, wow, finally, we have time and space, which is the title actually of my workshop, Making Time and Space for Love. And I have been giving this workshop for the last three years. And because I feel like how on earth do we take so little time consciously for the most precious thing we have in our life, which is yeah. love. I'll tell you what, it is, um, for me, I had one or two role models along the way, but I didn't understand what they were doing at the time, because I just didn't understand anything about what you were just talking about. But I do want to talk about one thing. Some people ask the question, Sabina, how... How is it you could be lonely? So this is, the, this is the thing, right? I've been asked this question in a previous relationship. You know, we don't understand how you could be lonely. I mean, you know, I mean, you're the perfect couple. You're a role model couple. And then I just thought to myself, wow, we put on a really good facade, right? I'm the public. We look really good. And I don't think that we were any different than most people. And so a friend of mine said something to me a long time ago and said, you know, this is how you know that you're only looking at the tip of the iceberg when you see the friction in relationships not just couples, but friction at work, right? Because a lot of times we think, Sabina, yesterday, everything was great. Oh, I'm so surprised. Today, it's not. But that's because we couldn't make time and space for it. And so I wonder why that is so difficult for people, right? You do a workshop, make time and space for love. You yes. know, uh, conscious creating, uh, conscious relating, mm -hmm. um, but we don't do it. What does that have to do with self-love? Is self-love at the cornerstone of this or is it that we just don't know how or all of that? <laughs> Probably oh all of it, right? We are all of that, all of that. How do you answer that in five minutes? Okay. So I believe also we have created a society um, where we have just been living in 24-7, 365. I mean, look at all these wonderful gadgets and don't get me wrong, Dr. Pat, I love my gadgets too. But we became kind of a slave to the gadgets. So we kind of really feel like um, we can, first of all, nonstop be invaded for everything what comes to us, not only why one channel. You know, in the good old days, probably only you and me and maybe some, some listeners may remember when you would have the old telephone on a hook in the house and if you would leave, nobody could invade you. You know, you're gone. But nowadays... Right. Yeah, you remember, right? I remember, you remember. So, but nowadays it's just impossible. We have everything in this, in this little beautiful gadget. And it's not only one channel. It's not only the call or the, the email. No, it's, you know, it's endless. I don't even start naming them. So what happens when our attention is nonstop outwards oriented because we're, of course, nonstop busy. Just look around. I mean, people are nonstop looking at this gadget or the laptop, you know, just look around if they're sitting in the restaurants, even, even if they're couples, they're sitting in restaurants and looking at their gadgets instead of having a con conversation. They're in bus. I mean, we even go to the toilet with it. I mean, excuse me, you know, it's, it's, it's an obsession. We feel like we have to nonstop answer and put ourselves out there. But what happens if we non-stop do is, which is attention giving away, when is the attention coming back? How do we feel ourselves again? Because actually we end up every single day totally empty and trained on attention. And nowadays I coach people 
who are 10 years younger with burnout, lost, confused, not knowing where to go, um, kind of giving up on love than five years ago. I mean, see how much this has been growing. And now with COVID, it has been become worse. I first thought, hallelujah, we finally have time and be with the one you're with. And if you don't have a partner, then there's a lot of time to invest in yourself, to get to know yourself. But look around, you know, most people, most families have not taken advantage. Some do, thankfully, some have. They really kind of, I think you mentioned it once to me, stories about more kindness and more concern, sorry, and more consideration for others. I think you spoke about when you had um, a walk with a friend. Yeah. I think you did that to me one day. And, but still, it's still in the mainstream, it's this rush, rush, rush. And even the home lockdown office, the people have been just using it to sit in front of the computer instead of yeah. taking time for their families or their partners. Yeah, and one of the things I want to ask you about is because um, people, I think sometimes myself included, uh, we create this um, curtain of confusion. I like to call it the curtain of confusion. And so let me just give you um, a specific example about what I mean by the curtain of confusion, because I think the curtain of confusion leads to why we do struggle so much. Uh, and I want to talk to you about that now. Um, <clears throat> COVID-19 has done something, right? And I'm not going to say what it is because it's different. But underneath this, before COVID-19, right, it, there had to be this thing <clears throat> that was there before. It just wasn't obvious. Okay. And I want to ask you about this. Struggle in relationship. And when you talk to people and you try to get underneath it, they may not say the word struggle, but you have a sense that it's in there, right? You know what I mean? I mean, people may not walk up to you and say, ah, oh, we're struggling. But then again, if they're working with you, they probably do say that, Sabina, right? Some do. Right. But let's talk about what happens. That struggle goes from once in a while to almost every day, right? Mm -hmm. What are some of the the things that you've discovered along the way that starts to build up that curtain, mm -hmm. that curtain of struggle and confusion. What have you noticed in working with people? Yeah, and I would say it's not only in partnerships, but of course it becomes more obvious in relationships. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not referring only to romantic relationships. I mean, yeah, to every. every it's everywhere. Yeah. yeah, I mean the workplace right now. That's a whole different show we can do. <laughs> But boy, the way that things are being played out or, or acting out in the workplace right now. Um, and that is a show because those are relationships. And sometimes, Sabina, aren't those work relationships? Like I had a relationship with a boss once that were stronger pretty much than any other relationship in my life. So I don't take those lightly. But let's just start for a minute um, with the struggle of relationships for the people that you're working with. Mm -hmm. um, do we even know that we're sabotaging love? Do we even like know that? No. And that comes again back to what I say, being empty. So if we don't have, for me, self-love is a pillar of any relationship. If I don't have self-love, you know, if I don't love myself, nobody can love me, nor can I love somebody, nor do I know my needs, nor do I know my values, nor do I know my boundaries. But I'm sitting here just expecting you, the other, to fulfill everything, which sometimes I'm not even know what I want, you know. So in the first place of relationships, it's sometimes quite rosy, you know, and then suddenly the, the unconscious needs, that neediness for attention and the demands drop in. And what happens, I mean, just if you imagine I'm your partner and I'm just sitting in front of you, this, this needy, just give me, give me, give me, love me, love me, love me attitude. <laughs> what would you in the end kind of feel, you know, I either get sick of it and, you know, say bye, or what happens a lot in relationships to become codependent because they're using each other for the excuse of their unhappiness. What a big price to pay right 
but things can be solved easily if I, you know, most of the time I say you need a guideline. It's like Alice in Wonderland, if she comes to a crossing and she says, was it a rabbit? Where do I need to go? And she said, well, where do you want to go? Well, I don't know. Well, what matters then? Just take the path, whatever. But in relationship, this leads to failure most of the time and to sabotage and a lot of problems. We need to know who I am. I need to know my values. I need to know my needs. I need to know how they feel when they're fulfilled, when they're not fulfilled. I need to know these values. For my values, I know my boundaries. Just recently, I started to coach a man in his late 30s. And he was actually coming to me because he just wanted to accept himself and let go of wondering and worrying all the time about other people's thought and, and thinking of him. And he wanted to become open and kind. And when I started to look at his needs and his values, and, and he suddenly saw that's actually exactly what he wanted, something started clicking yeah. because they were already in him. He just didn't see it. He was just projecting it outside that somebody else does it for him instead of taking responsibility again, that that's actually his values, his needs. Yeah. And you know, what's interesting too is um, like, I remember the first time, Sabina, I heard the word codependent and I honestly didn't know what it was at the time. And I wasn't really sure in what context, but this has become a one of the most used words outside of narcissism the one of the most used words in psychology in our contemporary times and i'm just not talking about academic psychology i'm just talking about how we help people how we help people become their true selves right mm -hmm. because sometimes we can get so enmeshed that we just don't know how to separate to the point that we even know what we want or know what we like. You know, there's this, there's this movie, right? Uh, with uh, Julia, Rob Julia Roberts and uh, Richard Gere. <laughs> and it's not the pretty woman one. It's the uh -huh. one that came later okay. with the wedding thing. And she's always like taken off. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Runaway remember? Bride. Runaway Bride. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Runaway Bride. And the the end of the movie is so telling when he says to her i bet you don't even know what kind of age you like and and she didn't and so when they come back together at the end of the movie she tells him what kind of egg now why am i bringing that up it seems like such a benign thing like seriously why are you talking about that because isn't part of the struggle and, and I'd love to hear what you, what your experience is, isn't part of the struggle that we lose sight of parts of ourselves if we don't take time and space for ourselves. Absolutely, Dr. Pat. For me, this is the key, the key element for everything. So when I say the inner powers of love is actually presence, authenticity and commitment, and that needs time. That starts with yourself, you're getting to know yourself, you know, and then the commitment of really wanting to evolve and to grow constantly and, and authenticity to just be yourself. But what we do is because of all the baggage we carry around from very small on, we just please, 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 which is for me, manipulation to get love. And then we please so much that we get resentment. And with the resentment, we start blaming, defending, attacking, projecting. You know, there's this huge resentment of not being good enough and you're not giving me what you want is, is a lot of guilt, shame. It's so mixed in all that relationship issues. And it, it comes to the forefront if it's not addressed first and foremost here and it needs time. And then yeah. Of course, yeah. Go ahead. No, no. I want you to continue because we're going to talk about this when we come back from break. Okay. The word "kind." The word "kind." It is such an important word, mm -hmm. and I often wonder if we have lost sight 
of the power of that. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? Okay. We live in a world where if you're not texting or tweeting or responding to the president's tweet or somebody else's tweet, or you're worrying about what this person's doing, I mean, how can we remind ourselves of kindness? Hmm. Do you want me to speak something about it now? Or after I'd the love, break? no, why don't you speak now and then we'll go to break because I'd love to hear what you're saying about this because I know that this is part of what you help people with. Yes. Well, it starts again becoming kind first and foremost for yourself. If you don't have kindness to self, how can you be kind to others? It's like, how can you, if you don't love yourself, you can't be loving anybody else or nobody can love you. The, the, the word compassion is for me very powerful because people break into tears when I teach them to have compassion for themselves, you know, for the inner animal and just be in this radical acceptance of who they are and not needing to fulfill any role and identity they have been thinking all their life they have to fulfill because somebody put it on them or they created themselves. But there is no greater weapon than kindness. And kindness starts here. Mm. And for that, you need to be able to be deeply connected to your inner self. Yeah. We're going to talk about this more. Um, for those of you just tuning in, by the way, we're taking your comments and we're taking your questions. Please feel free to give us a call. Uh, if this is you, if we're talking about you, if you're wondering, you know, I don't even understand what's going on with the relationship in my family, with my children, with my spouse, with my partner. Um, and I just want to say this one thing for everybody out there. This is not just for married people. These, this is for people who are in loving relationships today, but it's also for people in relationships. So whether you are somebody that is married, not married, in a relationship, partner, living together, you are connected to someone. Maybe it's your mom. I don't know. But if you feel like the tensions have gotten close to a boiling point. You want to talk to Sabina about full circle love. You want to get to that place where we're all reminded that we can express ourselves in kind and loving ways. Uh, when we come back, we'll make sure you have information on Sabina, but more importantly, we'll make sure that we take your questions, 1-800-930-2819. So full circle of love. What happens when maybe a slice of that circle seems like it's missing? What happens then? Another slice is yanked out from the circle. We'll be right back, everybody. Short break. Oh my God, Benny. Okay. You played that song, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I went right to the movie. <laughs> Ellie I'm Goulding, that. right? Yeah, Ellie yeah, Goulding. good job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I went right to the movie. Well, what's the movie from? Or what's uh, it from? Which 50 movie? Shades. Oh, okay. 50 Shades of Grey. Right. I have funny, I, I have a feeling Sabine is going to do a show about that and up, one of the upcoming things we're going to talk about here. Um, but boy, I went right to that. Um, welcome back, everybody. I am so thrilled to have Sabina Rademacher joining me here today uh, because we're talking about full circle of love. So I just want to say to everybody, this is not something that um, this is not something that you just wake up one day and you say, oh, I think I'm going to do it. Sabina, how do people find out about you? How do they find out about what you're doing? Well, of course, I have my website, which is uh, www.sabinarodomaker.com. Then you can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on YouTube. Um, you can find me also linked through the prestigious Hawk Hogwood College in England. You probably have heard from that. Americans love them. Love it. 
and uh, actually I will give there two courses. One is a it's, it's one one is a course and one is a free speech um, free talk, which is on the fourteenth of September. And the three part course starts in September as well, but you will find that on Hogwarts uh, College website. And my actually my course making time and space for love you find on my website which will be already the, the the next one will be running next wednesday 26th of august making time and space for love it will actually allow you to find tools because my workshops are based i give a little introduction so you understand what it's all about but it gives you tools to reconnect to your inner wisdom into your inner self and then of course it comes back to what we just talked about before break about the kindness so how do we actually listen to each other you know and that's a very important part in how we have relationships because most of the time we listen and speak unconscious yeah the listening part is the most important part because it it really requires us to be present till the very end of a phrase of somebody talking. And I was coaching because I'm coming from the international, international business development side. And I was coaching CEOs. They have gotten used to their mid, mid phrase and then they've jumped in to answer what they know about, you know, this, but we all have that. We're all guilty of this, of course. Yeah. We kind of want to jump in to finish the sentence either with our own reply already, or because we have an advice to give or uh, whatever comes up. But there's also, I call them the other kind of listeners, which are the ones, one of them is the non being non, non there, no presence. And you know them, you know, we all feel you're talking to somebody and there's nobody home. Have you ever seen <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I, I always ask people, why don't you stop them? You know, why don't you say hello? Nobody there. And it's totally legitimate that you don't have capacity. And that's what needs to happen in relationships. That we say, listen, it's totally legitimate that you don't have capacity to me right, to listen to me right now when you come home from work from a strong day and maybe you just don't want to. But isn't it not just being honest and authentic saying, listen, right now I can't give you any attention anymore. I'm burned out. And it would be nice to hear, but I will be for you there maybe. And then you set a time and a day. Yeah. And, you know, ever since you told me that, I've been really watching it and I am realizing it. And, you know, there are two aspects to, to this for me. Um, when somebody asks me something that I have to really think about, like I don't have like an answer at the top of my head, let's say, um, I will tend to kind of almost like it's like I'm disconnecting. And I think I do just for a short minute, but I'll almost look like I'll almost do one of these. Right. Right. Like, and, and it may take me like a good 90 seconds. Right. And I was on a call the other day. <laughs> I was on a call and, and I, I didn't have an answer immediately. And so I was thinking about it and I said to somebody, I said, okay, so this is me thinking, processing. I'm not ignoring you, right? I said, this is just me. And the person kind of gently said, yeah, we could see the smoke coming out of your head. Um, and so those are the kinds of things that if people don't know you, you might have to stop and explain. But... There are many times, and maybe at work you can't say to a boss, um, you know what, Tom, Mary, Joe, I don't have the bandwidth right now for that level of D. I, I actually said it to Linda the other day. We were sitting here, and Linda was talking to me about something very detailed. Linda is the queen of detail. There is not much that gets by Linda. There is just not much. Um, and she was talking to me about something so detailed as I was in the middle of trying to design a brand. So my head is up here, but the question was down here. 
and and I and I felt I said I said you know I don't have the bandwidth right now to get in the weeds down there. To be honest with you, I rarely have the bandwidth to get at that level. Mm. You know, it is my weakness. I do not have that kind of ability to get down at the detail and the brilliance that Linda does. Mm. But if we don't explain that to people, then we blow them off. But I want to get back to something else you said, because I want to talk about it because you teach it. This interrupting in the sentence thing. I think since I started to work with you, I started to become more aware of that. And I actually said to somebody today, I said, I said, are you okay? And they said, yeah. And I said, you seem a little bit stressed, maybe impatient. And I had to explain that without being mean and say, because you notice I had to explain something three times because I was interrupted the first time because it wasn't what I was talking the second time and the third time. And all of a sudden that's become a little thing for me. And I wonder what part of me feels very wounded about the interrupting thing. Interesting. Well, thanks to you, I've become more aware of that. Mm. But I just think so many people are moving so fast. Yeah. I don't know that we realize how we're harming uh, other people. Could you talk to that a minute? Because we are talking about empowerment. We are talking about boundaries. We are talking about listening and being in the present moment. But one of the things you shared, it is one of the hardest things to do, to say mm-hmm. to somebody without them literally taking your head off, like next, that you may not have the bandwidth for it. You know, give me 10 minutes. Let me take my shoes off because women wearing high heels, it's an awful, it's hard. It's like torture. But how important have you found this to be now in today's world? Well, it is unfortunately not used yet widely. And it's such a pity because again, presence is the most beautiful thing we can give somebody because presence is giving attention to somebody, yeah? So I'm really waiting and I'm fully present until you finish the sentence. I'm not off thinking of something else or what I should answer or what I could tell you or giving you advice or blah, blah, blah. I'm really waiting for something to open until you finish, yeah? That's a gift, but this gift can only grow in me if I have that presence for myself. I can't give presence if I'm, if I'm empty, if I'm leaking attention, if I'm needy for attention. So for me, and that is my full belief and my work is based on that, that when we are so attention seeking, of course we nonstop interrupt other people. And of course we're trying to get the, the word back because then I can speak and can show myself, you know? And, and this is all linked to the attention neediness. But if you come back to the, let's say the personal relationships, if I'm not able to say, listen, just give me a moment, then there's something unbalanced, either in yourself, mostly comes from self, but of course also in the relationship because there, what is, what is the trust and vulnerability aspect here in the relationship, yeah? And if it's within the work, in the workplace, what I have been learning in England when I was living there 12 years, I was impressed how many CEOs, managers actually took some time to close their eyes and just settle them in, in a meeting room, in the ground and to breathe themselves, first to breathe in the ground. And then they opened the meeting room. And it was a completely different setting as the one you're rushing in, you know, everybody's in their notebooks and then people starting talking. But I would just encourage, and of course, the younger you are, you may be more worried about losing your head when you say to your boss, uh, listen, I don't have attention span right now. But as you know as well, there's cultures who have longer attention span than, than others, and America's on the one which has the shortest one. Um, hmm. 
we can do use some other words to actually make ourselves understood. So maybe it's, you know, depend on the situation that maybe it's wording like, I will take notes of this all, but please excuse me if I come back tomorrow and, and just make sure that I have understood everything. Um, or may I come back to you if I have any questions? You know, it, it, it really depends on the level you are and your knowledge and the situation. Are you in this in this workplace for long? You established, you, you knew. I mean, there's so many factors, but you see my point, yeah? Yeah. And I want to ask you about this in the context for um, the courses. Um, and I want to make sure everybody knows that, one. Of, first of all, they can participate in these courses. And I want to just ask you, but making time and space for love. Now, that is, of course, you're offering on, um, on August 26th, right? And yes. so this is going to address what we're talking about in more detail, but also enable people to really learn some tools. Mm -hmm. And, and I think this is so key now. It's, these are the tools so that we can get to the place to make time and space for love. Mm -hmm. You know, these are, this is a new level of awareness for us Mm -hmm. that is being, I think, uh, accentuated by COVID-19, right? Um, But more importantly, we need to figure out what we can change. Aren't, aren't these courses that you're offering, aren't they also to help people change things? Of course, that, that's my wish. You know, My wish of making time and space is really inviting people to become more conscious that we all want love, yeah? we all want to belong, but instead of being nonstop the seeker outwards or because because sometimes people come to me, they have closed their heart. They won't love, but they close their heart completely because they have been hurt. And now it's like being afraid, but I still have the wish, but I don't want to go there. But because I spoke about full circle of love is is approach which actually is based on inner powers. So I'm not teaching anything new. It's just making conscious the powers you have actually. So the tools or the exercises I'm leading you through they will help you instantly to realize, wow, you know, there is something to it. And that's at least the feedback I have been given so far over the last three years. And I have been given this workshop internationally. And I just want to mention, even so it says for couples, and you, for me, it's important that there's always two people in front of the, the screen, but you don't have to be in a pair and you don't even have to be different sex. You know, you can be same sex, you can be friends or couples or whatever. It's just important that two book and sit on the front of the same screen because we're doing exercises and mm. uh, it's important. So look, we're going to do, we've got more of this conversation coming forward. Um, let folks know again, one, how they can take these courses, but also how do they work with you directly? To work with me directly, just Listen, I'm always open to a first chat. So um, plus, just give me a call, send an email, contact me via any of these beautiful gadgets we were just talking about, Facebook or Instagram or email. And uh, we have a chat. We organize a moment to speak and I see how I can help you. The courses, as I said, is on the website. You find them on the website. Mm. All right. Look, we're going to be talking more about this as the weeks ahead uh, approach and what your body of work is about. The idea of full circle of love is so important because any aspect of it that might be missing or that we're not able to focus, put attention on, you know, tends to, at least for me, have a ripple effect. Um, And what I mean by that is that if I'm not going to take time and space for love, then it's not like the effect of that goes away. Okay, so let me just let me just tell you what I'm saying. I don't think we realize like there's a cumulative effect on a relationship, even though it may seem to you, oh, I'm just just today. No, but then you look at it. And you go and you say, well, wait a minute. There's no time or space for love. And so can, can these few minutes left, can you talk about 
how we can approach this and also remove the element of fear because fear is a main part of what stops us sometimes from taking time and space for love. Well, first of all, it's not only making time and space for love in the relationship, it starts here. Yeah. I need to make time and space for myself first. I need to refill myself to be able to give. If I go empty into the relationship, whatever the moment is of the day, and I'm totally, you know, burn out from the day, there's nothing more to give. I'm rather much more demanding and needy. And of course, if the partner feels the same way, burned out and is not able to give, it's, it's, it's a it's hot tension there, yeah? You can see. So how can we create, again, space consciously to come down? And there's a lot of different ways doing it, but the consciousness needs to be there first. So that's what I'm saying again, you know, we need to use and live consciously and have the willingness to constantly observe what's going on in myself, what kind of feelings do I bring right now? Can I take responsibility again for my feelings, not throwing them out to you and blame you, but take, can I take, and even if it's just, just a short phrase, like uh, you're saying to your partner, listen, I'm emotional right now. And and then all the tension is taken out because the other one doesn't feel guilty. Have I done something wrong? You know, the subject comes up a lot in relationship. Oh my God, she's very mute again. Something like that. So you, you kind of just bring it open into the space, expressing your feelings. I'm feeling tired. I feel emotional. Give me some time and then come back to you. And you really take that time for self, not going again on the computer or take a hot bath, take a shower, um, Take a cup of tea, put the feet up, um, close your eyes for some minutes, breathe. You know, there's lots of easy ways to come back to self. But you really said it. You've got to, you have to have number one, the level of awareness um, that, first of all, I think we do realize we need that for ourselves. So that's the first step is what you're talking about is if you could get to the place where you are aware that, wow, if I just did this, what Sabina was saying, if I just did this, then I could address the next part of the question is, how would I spend that time with myself? Because it's part one, yeah, I realize I got to do it. And then part two is like, well, what does that really mean? Well, it might mean that you go sit outside and have a cup of coffee or something, or maybe you haven't gotten your nails done and that's a thing for you, right? And you decide, I'm going to go do that. Um, or you decide, how about a walk in nature? And maybe sometimes you want to do that alone. See, that I think is the hardest thing to do, too, when you need this, this, this rejuvenation time, right, for yourself. You have to be able to also say, look, love you. I just would like to take this walk this morning as a meditation. Those are all so related, aren't they? You just hit the nail. I mean, this is the most important key point that you really open and honest, if I'm saying again, authenticity to yourself first and foremost, and then to the other. To not pretend, you know, and then the nature is the hugest healing point in, in our beingness. So when we connect to nature, just being outside, just going into the garden or just going into the woods if you can or being on the lake or the ocean, whatever you have nearby, it already fills you with a completely different energy. And that's why I'm saying we have these innate powers. We have these beautiful powers around us which we can use. If you use them consciously, things change. Yeah. yeah. Well, Sabina, thank you. Awesome show. We're, you're going to be back we're going to do a part two, part three, of course. Um, last question. I'd love to know your personal message. And also, again, let folks know how they can find out more about you. Yes, thank you. You can find me on www.sabinarademaker.com. And my message is to this world is we don't make peace on this earth until we make peace in here and among each other. 
and um, yeah that's why i'm here this is my passion and trying to give this back to society mm. thank you thank you sabina and i want to say to everyone out there if you haven't done it today make time and space for love and start with yourself it doesn't matter how much time it is you know start out with whatever you can because you're worth it and you deserve it. Thank you all for tuning in. We'll see you next time.